Connected cars is a very hot topic at the moment, both obviously in the automotive world, but also in the mobile world. Um, it's very much crossing between two industries, some may say, which is quite exciting, really. Um, a lot of things are changing in terms of autonomous driving. Obviously, you've got all levels of autonomous driving now, from like kind of level one cruise control all the way up to level five. Needs no human interaction at all. But alongside that, cars are then becoming more and more connected and aligning that all that, for example, just the autonomous driving now, aligning that with and connecting it to your phone so you can see various things, plan journeys, plan maps. And generally, the digital world is just becoming much more integrated, should we say. I saw an advert last night actually, a little bit, little bit sad as I was sat in bed playing my laptop. I saw, uh, saw an advert, the latest advert from Volkswagen um, of the their latest concept car, um, which had tablets in the back, tablets on the on, on the roof, and um, drove the passengers. Yeah, passengers is probably the right word. I was going to say users, but if you're in a car, it's probably a passenger, and you're also a user um, driving the users around. And they were they were having a conversation, they were playing on their iPads. They were, I think. One view was actually them having a meeting, uh, which is quite exciting, really. There's a few fancy gimmicks around there, including the usual opening your car and turning it on from a remote location. So that it's, if it's particularly cold that day, you can turn it on and warm it up before you go outside, which is quite a nice little feature. Um, but but one I particularly like is a particularly luxury luxury car brand that that when you buy their top end uh, models, you get a free app. That comes along with it. You hope so. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> spending a few hundred thousand on a car, you'd hope you get something, something for your money. Um, and this app in particular actually allows you to press a button and call somebody to come and fill up your car for you. So the idea being, you drive to work in your particularly nice, flashy, luxury car, um, realise that it, it, it needs for the notes. You press a button on your phone. Actually, that's already connected to the car, so you can see how much fuel you've got in your car. Um, and somebody comes along. With the master master key on, on their app, opens your car, drives it to go get some petrol, and brings it back for you. Therefore, Mister Luxury Car Owner doesn't actually need to act, interact with anyone. They don't need to go to the uh, go to fill, go to the uh, car garage to or the, the petrol station to fill up their car. They don't need to actually interact with anyone. They've got more important things to do. Um, I like that one. That's 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 quite cool. Um, Is that the next car? Yeah, that's my next car. <laughs> I'll never go to a petrol station again. I've been having a look at sort of the, the safety aspect of connected cars, especially sort of between the autonomous driving, uh, particularly in response to earlier this week, obviously the Jaguar advert that yeah. came with some pretty heavy criticism. Yeah, sort of the news. Uh, wasn't. Sort of advocating, sort of having meetings uh, in in your car and it being an extension of your office. It's quite an interesting debate as to like Jaguar have come out and said, look, everything we're doing is completely legal, and indeed it is. But should you be advocating, yeah. not fully concentrating on the road? Yeah, it's an interesting debate though, because where will the world go? Where, where, when does a car no longer need a need a driver, and what does that mean? Well, Ford have been arguing that there's no in between round. So you're talking about the stages one to five. Ford have argued that sort of stages three and four are actually unsafe okay. because take the Tesla incident from last year where the fellow went underneath the truck because the systems failed. Yeah. Now he shouldn't have been using it on that particular road, but because of the safety he felt on highways, he decided to use it on that sort of road. Ford are arguing that when there needs to be some form of human impact, you're always just gonna have that safety cycle yeah. uh, of people needing to have some you know, interaction with the car, therefore they should be paying attention. Uh, yeah. So therefore they aim to go straight to stage five of pure autonomous cars. Yeah, and I think with, I suppose the improvements, especially with connecting your phone to just your regular car now, there's a massive issue I can see with legislation wise. Obviously, we had the rule change this last week with uh, within the UK where phones, the, the punishment for using your phone while driving. Six points, now, six points, it? 200 pounds. It's a lot of money, especially if you spend a lot of time on the road. It, it's it's a lot of money. But, needless to say, you shouldn't be doing it. But all of these innovations are only ever going to encourage it. And there's an ethical question there of what does this mean? What does this mean? I'm, I'm personally not, not one to ask too many comments on it because. I, I can see the discussion both ways, both for less human, um, but also more human, and so uh, it's an interesting discussion. <laughs>